What's up, everybody? My name is CJ Thompson. And I'm Jonathan Edwards. And this is the prelude to Hate to Pile On, which is this is the preseason. And we are talking running backs today. And we got three awesome segments for you today. So, Jonathan, why don't you go ahead and give them a rundown of what we're talking about today? All right, three topics today. We got uh, the first one is what makes a running back elite versus just a bell cow. Mm. Uh, the second one is we both build our fantasy backfield. We uh, pick two running backs, not including the elite ones, which we will establish in the elite versus bell cow. Uh, and then the third segment is we're each going to pick a rising star for the upcoming season. Uh, so let's get it, CJ. Yeah, so elite versus bell cow. That is um, a very interesting topic and is a very interesting thought for running backs because for so long, running backs has been underappreciated and underpaid for so long. And now the pay conversation is starting to kind of get to where it should be at because the People think you can plug and play a lot of running backs. In a lot of systems, you kind of can't insert, you know, 49ers, you know, insert the old Broncos teams, you know. Um, But there are truly elite running backs that makes a difference. You know, throughout history, we have guys like Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, um, Adrian Peterson, uh, you know, John Riggins, you know, Alfred Morris. Um, Rookie Clinton Alfred Portis Morris was a problem. Yes, um, like you know, lots of great running backs, um, but you know, at the same time, a lot of these guys can be replaced because of the fact that you know they were good bell cows for that year, but they weren't elite running backs to where they really made a difference. And now we, I would say, we probably only have three borderline four elite running backs playing today. And I would say that's Christian McCaffrey. Um, I would agree there. Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley. I would agree with Saquon. I don't know if Derrick Henry's elite. He he has elite runs. He has elite stats. Um, he's been he's been a hell of a bell cow. He's someone that I mean he's a monster. I mean, for truly, like, he's an elite running back. Like, I think it's tough because the how Saquon and Christian McCaffrey kind of set up the elite. They kind of set themselves apart just to the fact that they can do anything. Like, they well, don't have to go off. That's part the of the field. discussion. Like, what makes an elite running back to you? Right. But because like, to me, that ability in the passing game is what sets them apart and makes them elite. And that's something Derrick Henry doesn't have. Right. But you can say he's an elite, pure running back, old school, elite running back. And I know that's kind of like you trying to add like these asterisks or these stars to it. Like, oh, this is he's good. But in the pure sense, because he's just a running back. Like if you just take it from like, no, if you don't get rid of third down backs, catching and all that, and just pure running between tackles, running outside tackles, just running the ball. Derrick Henry is like, he could be the best because of how physical he runs the ball. I mean, he's a freaking freak. He's six, two, like just Jack diesel. Um, you know, Large. Christian McCaffrey, you know, at first Christian McCaffrey was known as a guy who's going to be that slot receiver, kind of H back guy who just third downs. But then he, he had to prove that, you know, he can run between the tackles. He can, you know, run the ball consistently. But then you got Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley coming out of Penn State was just a freak. You saw that man's thighs. Look, no homo or anything like that, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> those man's got some nice thighs. Like, those things were, like, you know, I think he – did he power clean 500 on his um, – I think in like college? I freshman. Yeah, like, that's insane. Like, he, he was built – he's built different, like, literally. And then the fact that he still has, what, 4-4 four, four speed? That's what yeah. he ran into combo on four four speed, and then he did kick returns. He can catch the ball at the back foot field. Like Saquon Barkley will probably edge his way to being the guy just because he just his body is built different. Christian McCaffrey has turned himself into an elite guy because of the fact that he's 
um, durable. He can, uh, he can just flat out just um, just do it with the rock, and he he can give you what a thousand catches. I mean, not thousand, hundred catches, a thousand receiving yards, a thousand rushing yards. He can do it all and still keep taking the uh, force. We don't know how long that can last because is his body going to hold up? You know, for like 10, 12 years. You know, once he gets over 30, I mean, he got his money, so he's, I mean, he should be good. But, you know what I mean? Like, that's the biggest arguments I see with the running backs because of their body differences, but also their play styles as well. Yeah, I think Derrick Henry's elite as, like, a throwback running back. Like, if you want, like, the 90s, the smash mouth, 90s and 80s smash mouth style football Derrick Henry's your guy and the fact that he's still doing it now in an era where things are much more pass happy and he's kind of become like a dinosaur amongst the running backs but he can still put up numbers even though everybody knows he's going to get fed that is an elite talent I just don't know if he's elite all around because to me what makes you elite is somebody who can be incredibly productive both on the ground and in the passing game. And Derrick Henry's not, I mean, Derrick Henry's not a bad receiver out of the backfield, but he's not nearly as productive as Saquon Barkley and Christian McCaffrey or even Alvin Kamara. Um, I think the top two running backs right now are pretty clear cut. Uh, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, whatever order you want to put them in. I won't argue as long as Christian McCaffrey's uh, number one. Um, <laughs> but and then I think Alvin Kamara and Derrick Henry are, and maybe even Zeke, if he can regain some of the exposure he seemed to have lost last year, are in that just a step below tier, like borderline elite, but also clearly the best of the bell cow options right and then you got the uh just the rest of the bell cows you got your nick chubbs your joe mixons thank you i definitely um i need to see more from alva camara because i think if you were talking what two years ago oh yeah alva camara would definitely be right there same with zeke um they're just, you know, they're just really it's like almost any given day, you know, like I feel like Zeke has kind of had a lot of I don't think he had a lot of injuries, but I feel like he's had a games where he's kind of like, you know, a little up and down, a little rocky here and there. I, um, but he's still an elite. Like, I think honestly, Zeke and Derrick Henry are kind of the same animal, you know, just the ones a little bit smaller. I mean, not really smaller, but like shorter. But like they're both like physical freaks or just old school running backs that are elite runners, you know? Uh, I apologize to Vikings fans everywhere. I forgot to say Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook's in there as well. He's definitely the top six, yes. It's just injury concerns. It's hard to keep him in that upper echelon if he keeps dipping down out of it because of injuries. And that's what hurts him, especially because when he's going for a second contract, it's going to it's going to hurt him to get that top number because of the fact that, you know, you have a guy, uh, Mackenzie Alexander. Is that the – no, it's something – what's the backup running back for Minnesota? Uh, they got a couple. They got Mike Boone. Uh, it's one that's like runs just like him. They got like three running backs in <laughs> dreads. They all look very similar if you don't see Well, I'm just faces. talking about like play style. Um – but they they have guys who can almost fill in and be as explosive as them. I mean, Dalvin Cook is. I mean, it's not too many people that are as explosive as Dalvin Cook. But it's just the fact that you have to have that asterisk next to his name. You have to say, well, if he can stay healthy, because I think Dalvin Cook could be one of the best running backs in the league if he can stay healthy. If he can prove it constantly, because if he can keep the ball moving, keep the chains going. Kirk Cousins can actually be a decent quarterback. We see that when he did in Washington. Like if he has a good running game behind him, he can put up numbers. I mean, he still puts up numbers, but he he's more effective 
if the running game is flowing, if it's running, and if it's going. Alexander Madison is the running back. Alexander back. Madison. Okay. I got you. He does run. I think he's a little bit smaller than Dalvin Cook, but he runs just like him. Uh, and Mike Boone is a bit more of a bruiser, but he's he's like a a heftier right. Dalvin Cook. Like he's not as fast, a little bit uh, bigger, runs a little stronger, not quite as elusive. But yeah, uh, between Mike Boone and Alexander Madison, like they have a solid duo there if Dalvin Cook is to hold out in this games. Obviously, they'll miss him, but I don't think it'll hurt them that bad. Yeah, especially if you can kind of get a running back by committee, which San Francisco, I mean, did beautifully last year on the way to getting into the Super Bowl. Um, but so um, transitioning actually into our next segment, we are going to do fantasy booking or fantasy uh, GMing, you can say, of our uh, our our fantasy backfield that we would love to have. And we are excluding elite running backs that we just talked about. So we're excluding uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Derek Henry, and Saquon Barkley. And then I'm thinking we should... uh, Yeah, that's it. Let's just do those three. Um, Okay. And we'll, you know, we'll go from there. Like, who... Who we want to have our one-two punch as? So, if, um, if you're mad at the three elite running backs uh, we've established, be mad at the maker of this graphic that we have. Uh, it wasn't very us. true. It wasn't us. Uh, the graphic should be up here for you. Um, also, let us know in the comment section, like, who do you think are the top three elite running backs, or who's your top five elite running backs? We want to hear from you guys as well. But we're about to build our fantasy backfield. Jonathan, I'm going to kick it off to you first. Who is your lead back that you are starting off with? Okay. Uh, My lead back. I'm going with uh, your guy, Nick Chubb. Okay. Georgia boy. Uh, For those of you that don't know, CJ's been a Georgia fan since 2015. Um, I've been a Georgia fan since 2008 since I was in middle school. When I had to decide between when I was in middle school when everyone was f- football fans, everyone was decided it was like, oh, you're either a USC fan or you're a Clemson fan growing up in South Carolina. And I was like, you know what? I almost wanted to root for South Carolina because of their Under Armour, but I didn't. And I didn't want to root for Clemson. So I decided to go south and I became a fan of Georgia. But anyways, continue. In 2015, yes. Uh, anyway, Nick Chubb, baller. Coming out of the draft, he had a knee injury that scared off a lot of teams, so he slipped to the second round. But he was very clearly a first-round talent. Uh, explosive, big, can catch passes, run through tackles, evade tacklers, uh, jump over several people, um, just a freak athlete, really good football player, tough. Everything you want in a running back, really. Uh, the reason he's not elite, in my opinion, is one, is usage, especially with Kareem Hunt on the Browns. Uh, he hasn't been able to show his pass-catching chops uh, as much as some of the other players. Um, but I think he is capable, and that's why he's my lead back. Uh, CJ, you want to take over? Who's your lead back? Okay, so for my lead back, I'm having a lot of difficulties choosing who I want to lead just because of the fact of my offense that I want to run is going to be a little bit more up pace, uh, up tempo. And so I need an electric running back that's going to set the tone. And the two guys that I've chosen both have a little bit of concerns, but I'm a guy of second chances. And for me, my lead back is going to be Dalvin Cook. Yes, I was talking a bunch of shit about Dalvin Cook just recently about his injury history. But listen, when he's healthy, if we're scrapping all injury histories, he is I don't know if you undoubtedly. Can do that. I think you're cheating now. 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If if this is the world that we are in currently, let's let's get, step out of reality and go to this fantasy world that we love to be in. Which I mean, trust me, I like a little bit of fantasy play. You know what I'm saying? But Dalvin Cook is just an electric running back who can catch the ball and can run between tackles or outside the tackles. He's just electric with the ball that can set up play action passes. And but he also can be in the screen game. His screen game is phenomenal. Especially if we're playing against a team who has a heavy passer, such as the 49ers, such as the Washington Redskins, or Washington football team, excuse me. Um, Dalvin Cook is just the, uh, it's just a good back that you want that is just going to be explosive, and he, he sets the tone for your offense. And you can build an offense around him easily so i have to go dalvin cook for my my lead back i respect that uh he was under heavy consideration for me for my lead back but uh his injury history did scare me off uh just to clarify for this exercise are we doing multiple bell cows or one bell cow and one non-bell cow uh you can do you can do multiple bell cows two bell cows all right. I was going to go Dalvin Cook as my second back because while his injury history scares me as a lead back, if he's your second back coming in, that's terrifying. Very. Uh, but CJ took him off the board. So I'm going to go with uh, a running back who's problematic off the field, oh. but on the field, he's nice. Uh, well, there's several off the field problematic running backs, but let's not get into that. Uh, Joe Mixon. Oh, okay. So he hasn't really done ridiculous numbers in the NFL yet. Uh, Some of that's because he's had Andy Dalton as his quarterback, a washed Andy Dalton, I should say. He was not horrible uh, in his younger days, but the last couple seasons he's not been that great. Well, he's about to be Uh, the the Dallas starting quarterback. The offense, he's not. (laughs) The offensive line has uh, been pretty much atrocious. Uh, They finally spent a first-round pick on a lineman. Well, I shouldn't say finally. On a good lineman last year. uh, Tore his ACL, I believe, and missed the entire season. So the investment they made there didn't even really come to fruition last year. Uh, But this year, he'll be back. Uh, Jonah Williams at left tackle for the Bengals. I think the offensive line will be a lot better. I expect Joe Mixon to have a much better season. Um... With Nick Chubb, I did say he's a bit of a dual threat, but not as much of a pass catcher. Joe Mixon is also a dual threat, but he's also a phenomenal pass catcher. If you go back and watch him at Oklahoma, uh, he was insane. Very true. Incredible. Uh, I thought he might have been one of the best backs in that class. Uh, He's just really, really good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take him as my second back. And between the two of them, you can run pretty much any scheme, power scheme. They can both handle that. Uh, screen game, they can both handle that. You want to split one out wide? Probably not Nick Chubb. Uh, Joe Mixon can go out wide though. Uh, inside zone, they can both handle that. Off tackle, both can handle that. Sweeps, power run game. I think they can handle everything. Uh, so I got a pretty good balance between my two receivers. Uh, not tipping off the uh, the defense either way with one of them being on or off the field. Uh, also, with Joe Mixon's ability to split out wide, I think you could have them both on the field at once. So you can get a little creative if you want. Uh, I just think that's a very good backfield. Uh, CJ, who do you have for your second back? So for my second back, see, I like your ideology – I a lot. Oh my god! I like the, your thinking <laughs> of <laughs> having both running backs balanced and having um, really you can kind of fill either or in. Like if you have to put Joe Mixon as your primary back because of Nick Chubb is out, you know you're not really losing too much. You might even gain a little bit more pass catching abilities. But you know some also say if you pretty much have the same back, does the two backs that do the same thing, 
is that really what you want? Do you want to have some variety? Var- var- oh my goodness, you want to have some differences between your two running backs. See, but I, would I agree I'll- with you. But if they can both do everything, I mean, I'm gonna take two backs who could do everything. That is Back a good to point, you, CJ. That is a good point. So, because of the whole issue about differences. I also will go the same route that you went and my second running back will be Melvin Gordon, who is an electric running back who can run the ball a little bit underway. If he beefs up a little bit, I think he can be a better thumper between the tackles. Um, he has really good uh, pass catching ability. I would say really good, but it's, it's pretty decent. He also can do well in the screen game. Um, He's electric. I think he's electric. He's not as electric as Dalvin Cook, but I think who is? Yeah, exactly. Who is uh, nobody? Saquon. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> but um, but Melvin Gordon, I think, still kind of gets slept on a little bit. I mean, he did last year with the contract negotiated. He kind of got the Le'Veon Bell, but a little bit worse. I mean, Le'Veon I Bell still got the money, but he kind of definitely didn't get no money. You know what I'm saying? And I think. Uh, he can be a really good talent, especially in catching. I think like he he had a good fair bit of like receiving touchdowns, uh, playing for the Chargers and now playing for the uh, the Broncos this season. Where he get this play against the Chargers, I can expect at least two great games from Melvin Gordon this season, at the very least. Um, you know, Philip Lindsay's also one heck of a running back as well to be that one two punch with. Uh, but Melvin Gordon, I think, will suit my team perfectly. I think we can have a two running back set and do um, fake screens to the left and then roll out, you know, Melvin Gordon to the right. So, like, it's a lot of flexibility that I like to have with both of these guys. And, you know, um, Melvin Gordon also has good size. I think he's about six foot, uh, I want to say. So I can line him up in a slot if I need it to. So that's who I want to have as my not even I wouldn't even say backup but my, my two punch you know what I'm saying that that counter right hook uh, when we are taking down the uh, Dallas Cowboys this season I think that's the ideal backfield uh, you don't have a starter and a backup you have co-starters exactly and I think we both did that uh, let's see next segment we got uh, rising stars Hey, rise a star. So, who do you think is a rising star for this upcoming season? Um, you know, this one was a tough one. I can honestly tell you that I was up all night thinking about it, rolling over, trying to figure out, you know, who is going to be that next breakout star? Who's really going to take the ball and run with it? Literally and figuratively, I'm saying. And it's just like, I just, I didn't, it was tough, you know? But at the end of the day, you cannot dispute facts. You cannot dispute evidence. And by me saying that, I am choosing Darius Geis of the Washington football team as being the rising star, elevating his game next season, um, and just really just taking the team to the next level. He is a thumper. He's explosive. He can catch out the backfield. He's a great in the uh, screen game. He can even return kicks if you want to. But we are having the Dalvin Cook conversation with Darius Geis. And I hate having the, the, the Dalvin Cook conversation if he can stay healthy. Honestly, I think Darius Geis could be slightly in a tier. He's in the same room, but not in the same area as Dalvin Cook because they are both are electric players. But at the same time, they might be both so you know, on the rehab table. And I hate to say that about Darius because I love Darius guys so much. I I am um, a fan of the Washington football team, Um, but I don't play favorites. I don't play favorites at all. Never would have guessed. But Darius guys, I think he just, his tape out of of college LSU was phenomenal. And I think um, this year he will have plenty of opportunity to uh, display it. Jonathan? I agree with you. Darius Geis is a really good... I love the talent there. Uh, Injuries have slowed him down. But as a wise man once said, 
the best ability is availability. Ooh. Uh, and it's a strong concern with uh, Mr. Geis. So for me, uh, I would have Geis. I think Washington's offense should be a lot better this year. Uh, but the injury concerns scare me. I'm going to go with a player who kind of broke out last year, uh, but he was a rookie, so I'm expecting him to take a bigger step forward this year, and that is Miles Sanders of the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, uh, okay. He was drafted. I think they kind of saw him as uh, a Darren Sproles replacement. He was kind of seen as a receiving back at least in the early stages of camp. But over the course of the season, he showed he can run the ball up the middle, uh, outside. Still phenomenal uh, as a pass catcher. He can do pretty much everything. I think he can be their lead back, and he should be this season. Uh, I'm expecting some big things from him, even though uh, the Eagles typically go running back by committee. I'm still expecting him to have a pretty strong season. Uh, fantasy RB2 type season. Okay. So you can get him around your second, third round turn maybe uh, as your second running back or first running back if you've gone receiver first. Uh, I think he should be pretty good both fantasy-wise and real life. CJ, any thoughts? Well, first and foremost, he plays for one of the worst teams in the NFL. Actually, I, I'll correct myself. He plays for the second worst team in the NFL, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. I do not like the team at all, but Miles Sanders has talent. But he did start off as the fourth running back to start the season, and I don't, I'm not saying that says anything, but... He worked his way from the bottom. Now he's here. I'll be interested to see what he does against uh, any other team but the Washington football team this season. I think he will have uh, really good games, especially if uh, he can counteract that with Carson uh, Wentz um, and you know have that pass game going well every other game except against the Washington football team. Um, but Miles Sanders, I think he'd be definitely one to watch. He definitely does give me the Darren Sproles vibes for sure. Definitely the same kind of body type. Darren Sproles is definitely a beefcake, though, like a little, you know, swole, you know, dude. I mean, he's what? How old is he? Like 36? Like something like that? He's but I mean, he still can go. Did he retire this year? Hmm? Did Darren Sproles retire this year? Because he just got an injury. I think he got like another injury, like an Achilles injury recently, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I guess he did retire. He's a, a personnel executive for the Philadelphia Eagles. So he moved into a, a front office role with them. So good for him. Which is, which is good because, I mean, Darren Sproles definitely can uh, uh, mature and help develop these running backs that they have on the team because God knows that the Philadelphia Eagles need a running back. I think the last good running back they had was probably... Ooh. Westbrook? What? This is the last good running back they had was Brian Westbrook? Yeah. Have you not heard of LaShawn McCoy? Oh, yeah, Shady McCoy. Yeah, I forgot about him. Brian Westbrook was nice, though. He was man nice. Was, man was a dog. Carried my second grade fantasy football team. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so, um, him and Mary yeah. Barber. Ooh. Phenomenal duo. That was a good duo. Dang. That, that, honestly, when you just said that kind of really, when I said Westbrook, that really just kind of like threw back my like old school, like just starting to watch football, like memories. And it kind of just made me like feel all warm inside. But, and uh, that's why we need sports. So wear a mask so we can get this football season. Exactly. Uh, if you don't, we're coming for you. And we hope that this episode makes you feel all warm inside. I hope you enjoyed our canty banter. We only are getting better each episode. This is just the beginning journey to something great. Because um, we're still in preseason mode. We're still warming up. Preseason for all of us, folks. 
Exactly. So we're just getting better. And then by the time the season starts and the season's here, we're going to be ready to go week one. And we're going to be spitting out great stuff for you guys. Fantasy we're be stuff. Jim Nance and Tony Romo. Oh, wait. I don't want to be Tony Romo just because of, you know. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Tony Romo's the good one, so I'll be him. <laughs> I'll be uh, Booger McFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's a tour then. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, thank you guys again for watching us. Uh, we hope you had a good time. Um, I've been CJ. I remain Jonathan. And this has been the preseason, the prelude to Hate to Pylon. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Yes. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again. 